So in this video, we are going to learn how to evaluate simultaneous limits. In the previous video, we have seen a comparison about repeated limits and simultaneous limits. Now here, we will actually see some techniques, tricks to evaluate simultaneous limits. So now if you observe this type of function xy upon square root of x square plus y square, here you should always notice that whenever you have x square plus y square in the denominator, here you have square root of x square plus y square. So basically x square plus y square is coming in the denominator. Whenever you have something like this, it is always easy or better to substitute x equal to r cos theta, y equal to r sin theta. So I will write x is equal to, so put x equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. Remember this will be the standard trick to do such problems with x square plus y square in the function. right? Now because of this, what happens is that x square plus y square will become r square cos square theta plus r square sin square theta. But cos square theta plus sin square theta will become 1. So this will be equal to just how much? This will be equal to r square. Right? Now x and y are already tending to 0, 0. Right? So x and y both are tending to 0. So this means what will happen to x square plus y square? If x and y both are tending to 0, 0, then x square plus y square will also tend to 0 square plus 0 square means x and x square plus y square will also tend to 0. So this means that r square is tending to 0 because r square is nothing but x square plus y square. So r square is tending to 0 means I can say that r is tending to 0. So x, y tending to 0, 0 will be equivalent to saying that r tending to 0. I am not saying anything about theta. It does not mean that x and y tend to 0, 0 means r and theta both tend to 0, 0. It just means that r is tending to 0. We cannot say anything about theta. Right. So let us look. So this limit that I want to evaluate, this limit will be equal to what? This limit will be limit. x, y tending to 0, 0 will be now just replaced by r tending to 0, which we have obtained here. Is equal, and what will, we, what will we write here? x is r cos theta into r sin theta divided by square root of x square plus y square but x square plus y square is r square so this will be square root of r square and therefore this will become limit r tending to 0 of r cos theta sin theta upon r this r will cancel and you will be just left with cos theta sin theta and limit is r tending to 0. So cos theta sin theta has nothing to do with the limit so uh, about r. So I will just get what? I will just get cos theta. Sorry, here that is r square. So one r will remain. So cos theta sin theta will be out of the limit. And what will you get? Limit as r tending to 0 of who remains inside the limit? Only one of the r remains in the limit because one r has cancelled. And what is limit of r tending to 0 of r? So this is 0. So finally this will be cos theta sin theta into 0. So the product completely will become 0. This is cos theta as it is, sin theta as it is and this limit is how much? This limit is 0. So entire multiplication is 0. So what is the answer of this limit? So limit x y upon square root x y plus y square is equal to 0. Okay. Now let's see the next problem. So I want to evaluate the limit x y tending to 0 0 x y sine of square root of x square plus y square upon x square plus y square. Again we will use the trick of the first problem that whenever you see x square plus y square I am going to directly put in the answer x equal to r cos theta y equal to r sine theta. So what will happen because of that? x square plus y square will be replaced by r square and r will tend to 0 because x and y both are tending to 0. Right? So this limit will be equal to limit r tending to 0 of x, y is r cos theta, r sin theta 
into sin of square root of x square plus y square but x square plus y square is r square upon x square plus y square again x square plus y square is r square this r square r square will cancel and we will have only cos theta sin theta which will come outside of the limit because there is no theta in the limit so i will have cos theta into sin theta limit r tending to 0 and what will be inside the limit so everything is gone so we just have sin of r in the limit nothing upon so we just have sin of r right and what is r tending to 0 of sin r it will be sin 0 and sin 0 is 0 right so this will become what cos theta into sin theta into 0 so finally this limit will also be 0 so it is very easy to see see that Whenever I have x squared plus y squared, I will try always the polar form x equal to r cos theta r sin theta. You can quickly evaluate these limits. Let's see one more problem. Now, we have to evaluate this limit x y tending to 0, 0, x cube y cube upon x squared plus y squared. So, what will we do? We will again use the same trick and now it is very easy. I will go a little bit fast. So, x equal to r cos theta, y equal to r sin theta and here r tends to 0. So, this limit becomes limit r tending to 0 of r cube into cos cube theta into r cube into sin cube theta upon x square plus y square which is r square r square cos square theta plus r square theta. So what is left now cos cube theta sin cube theta has nothing to do with the limit so it will come outside so cos cube theta into sin cube theta will come outside the limit and I will have limit r tending to 0 this will be r cube into r cube will be r raised to 6 and r raised to 6 upon r raised to 2 so that will cancel and give me r raised to 4 so this is r raised to 4 and what is what will happen if r tends to 0 of r raised to 4 so this limit will also become 0 so i will have just cos cube theta into sin cube theta into 0 so the limit of this will be equal to 0 right now this second problem that we have now that does not have x square plus y square. So we have to use something different now. Now we have to use our usual limit rules um, th that you do in your previous classes. So let me write it as limit x y tending to 2 comma 1. Okay and then I will multiply and divide by some quantity smartly so that I can evaluate this limit. Now all of us know at the back of our mind that sin inverse theta upon theta this limit we know that this limit tends to what as theta tends to 0 this limit tends to 1 the similar result also holds for tan inverse theta right tan inverse theta upon theta or theta upon tan inverse theta that also tends to 1 so can i use that so i will write here sin inverse of xy minus 2 and in here i will write tan inverse of 3xy minus 6 And I will multiply and divide by the quantity, namely I will multiply it by 3xy minus 6 to numerator and denominator. This is your standard technique that you do, right? So when you look at this first limit, now xy is tending to 2, 1, okay? What is this? This is sine inverse of xy minus 2 upon 3 times xy minus 2 i can take a 3 common and here this is nothing but 3xy minus 6 upon tan inverse of 3xy minus 6 correct so i am mean up to here now what will i do to evaluate this now if, if you see this result i am going to use this result x is x is close to 2 and y is close to 1 so xy minus 2 if i calculate x into y minus 2 so it is 2 into 1 minus 2. So this is like your theta and that theta is tending to 0, right? So what, what can I write for this now? So this is limit xy minus 2 is tending to how much? xy minus 2 is tending to 0. Why? Because x is 2 and y is 1. So xy minus 2 will obviously go to 0. And this looks like sine inverse of xy minus 2 upon 3 times xy minus 2, right? Multiply by something. I will come to come to it later. So what is this limit now? This one upon three. 
will not be affected it will come out of, out of the limit and inside i will have this part looks like sin inverse theta upon theta and theta is tending to zero so that is how much is that limit that limit is one so this will be one by three into one multiplied by now let us look at this part here again i will have limit of 3xy minus 6 3xy minus 6 also tends to 0 why because x is 2 and y is as good as 1 so it is 3 into 2 into 1 minus 6 so it is 6 minus 6 so this is going to 0 right so this is again 3xy minus 6 upon tan inverse of 3xy minus 6 so this is also looking like theta upon tan inverse theta and we know what is the limit of theta tending to 0 tan inverse of theta upon tan inverse theta that is also 1 so this will be just multiplied by what this complete limit is going to be this limit is going to be 1 so what is the final answer of this question the final limit of this question is going to be just 1 by 3 the last problem of this video is now x plus y minus 1 upon square root x minus 1 minus y and x y tending to 0 1 right so now I, what I will do is I will use our standard technique. We will just multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. So what is the conjugate of the denominator? That is I will write the denominator square root x minus square root 1 minus y and multiply it by the conjugate. The conjugate is square root of x plus square root of 1 minus y and square root of x plus square root of 1 minus y. So I have multiplied and divided by the conjugate of the denominator. The numerator and this I am going to keep it as it is. x plus y minus 1 I am going to keep it as it is. Right. So this will be equal to what? Limit xy tending to 0, 1. And the denominator now looks like a plus b, a minus b. So it is a square minus b square. So it is, will be square root of x whole square will be x minus the square root of 1 minus y and square root of 1 minus y that will become just 1 minus y and numerator I will keep as it is it is x plus y minus 1 multiplied by square root of x plus square root of 1 minus y right if I open the bracket of the denominator what will happen it will become x minus 1 plus y right so this denominator when I open the bracket it will become x minus 1 plus y so it will become x minus 1 plus y and now you see that it exactly cancels with the numerator it is x plus y minus 1 x plus y minus 1 so this cancels and what is the limit so limit x y tending to 0 1 of inside the limit I have just only one term which is square root of x plus square root of 1 minus y and you can directly now put the values of x so, so square root of x limit x tending to 0 so it will become square root of 0 plus square root of root of 1 minus y. y is tending to 1. So it will be just 1 minus 1. So the final evaluation limit will be equal to 0. This is how you do the problems of evaluation of simultaneous limits. I hope now this, this concept is clearly understood.